Thanks, uh, thanks for the invite to be here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a fantastic opportunity. I went to uh, uh, the University of King's College in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where I got my uh, journalism degree. This journalism school is way, way more impressive. Uh, although King's is a great school, but uh, you guys have some great facilities here. And uh, maybe uh, what uh, we're going to talk about, uh, about the, uh, a little bit about uh, Read Write, is uh, we're a 13-year-old uh, tech publication uh, founded in, by uh, Richard McManus to cover Web 2.0 uh, in uh, 2000, 2003. Still love it when I see a, uh, <laughs> a, uh, an email that uh, refers to Web 2.0. Um, we pivoted. Uh, it, we had great traction. Uh, we were bought by an accelerator about a year ago, and we uh, pivoted to IoT. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, it was, uh, <laughs> sorry, a little, uh, let's just give me a little bit of water there, please. Um, sorry there, guys. <laughs> I'm getting over a little bit of a cold. Um, so we pivoted to IoT uh, about a year ago. And uh, uh, IoT in the connected world. Uh, so for us, that means uh, covering a handful of verticals. We're attached to an accelerator uh, that ran a, uh, uh, that came up with new startups to actually uh, try and solve some of those problems. The biggest challenge for me taking over that job as editor in chief um, was that we had a great um, audience. We had about a million, uh, million page views, a million page views a month. Uh, 1.6 million Twitter followers, a fantastic social uh, footprint. And I knew I was going to lose some of them uh, when we did this pivot. But for us, it was a much bigger opportunity um, to look at what the wider connection is between uh, technology and, and humanity. When we talk about IoT, and it's a buzzword, I came to this, um, we mentioned a little bit about CNBC. Um, I, uh, in a bit of a round trip, uh, I went from journalism uh, into finance and then uh, back into journalism again, covering around uh, environmental issues. Um, so that led to covering clean tech and environmental finance. Clean tech is the same kind of marketing buzzword um, that kind of happens uh, that I saw IoT being. So in terms of a basket of technology, something getting a lot of headline traction, but not a whole lot there wasn't really a whole lot to it, except it was a kind of a cool marketing term. And so for us, when, we, when I came in, we said, hey, we're going to break this down into some very separate verticals. Um, and as we saw what the connecting, connective tissue was between those verticals, uh, it dawned on me really quickly that my original intent to say, well, the Internet of Things, or IoT, uh, and, and the connected world is really about human beings accessing this technology. So for, it, it, for us, that meant those stories around technology stopping to be sort of uh, a cool fetishization of it uh, became, it became much more important to actually connect that technology to human beings. And so for our verticals, um, we, uh, uh, one, of the thing, one of the key verticals we did was smart cities. We refer to smart cities, transport, health, and so on, wearable devices, uh, smart city technologies. Uh, that could be all of the enabled, uh, you know, the street furniture you see in the city now. That's, uh, you know, bus shelters, all that kind of thing, all that connectivity. And, and autonomous vehicles are another big piece of it. We saw that as saying, like, everybody needs to touch on that. Uh, it, it's... It, all of that is bringing together a diverse group of people. The first rollouts of that are going to be where that technology actually exists in significant amounts. So that's really going to be in, that's really going to be more likely to be in an urban environment than a rural environment. And therefore, it's less about the technology itself and more about the community. So when we came in and we took over, uh, we, we took over ReadWrite um, and we pivoted to IoT. One of the big issues that everybody kept talking about was community. So once we figured out who we were actually talking to, who we wanted to talk to, uh, in our case, it was uh, developers of software, um, C-suite executives, and so on around technology, but also 
a, a broader group of decision makers. Um, you know, if they're inside a company, they might be at a managing director level. They could be a chief innovation officer at a city. Um, I realized it was really going to be more about how do you connect that to the actual citizens or the consumer, if you want to think of it that way. I don't like to don't like to conflate those two things. So it's it's a real. For us, that was what we did. We wanted to get out and identify what the real connection was between the person on the street and a whole pile of new technologies that a lot of people right now, they're very interesting, but they're also um, very terrifying. If you saw the, uh, um, a lot of what was mentioned during the election campaign this year, people are scared about automation. Um, it costs jobs. It will create other jobs too. It will open up other opportunities that None of us really, uh, none of us really understand at this point. Still, there will be some knock-on effects, but uh, the truth is, there's a whole lot more benefit that could happen from it too. And so, you know, for us, uh, you know, as a what began as a tech blog 13 years ago, we had a new. We finally found ourselves with a new purpose, um, and which is very interesting for me. Um, I won't talk too much about myself. Um, but uh, having uh, you know, worked as a, a newspaper reporter in Canada and uh, having left that and worked in finance and then returned to journalism, now that I can afford to, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's been a very interesting discussion with our tech team at uh, ReadWrite who are constantly asking me for page views or uh, they're asking me for vanity metrics, which I say, I don't understand why we'd want to go after that. I don't want to, <laughs> going from a million page views to four million, I'm not really sure what that gets me for an audience. Going from uh, a million to 500,000, if that is in fact 70% of the audience that I want to reach, um, to me makes a lot more sense. So verticalization, a deep verticalization in this space is the only thing I think that's really going to get, get us all traction in terms of uh, uh, in terms of our future. And that's why I say, you know, despite this technology, these are not new problems. When I worked at the Halifax Daily News uh, in Canada, we were one of the first North American, if not the first North American daily newspaper to go online in 1993. Um, it didn't stop the newspaper from being the second place newspaper in a small market that stopped printing in 2008. Uh, so that is the reality of it. It's, it's always been a tough world for certain kinds of media outlets. So for us, the, for me, it was the same thing, and I kept hearing uh, you know, the, the, the story over uh, in my head from our, uh, our publisher at the Daily News saying, hey, you know, the, the broadsheet, we were the tabloid, the broadsheet in town was the, uh, uh, you know, had an evening edition and a morning edition, for anybody here who actually remembers that there used to be two daily editions at a newspaper. Um, the evening edition actually had a separate name but was in fact just a headline, uh, a wrapper around the morning edition. And it had 20,000 additional subscribers. Uh, 20,000 subscribers who subscribed to the morning and the afternoon edition. We needed 15,000 subscribers to bump up our ad prices. And we said, why can't we just convince these people that are getting two of the exact same newspaper every day to get our newspaper as the second paper? Never worked, um, but it was. It, but I mean, that is that just goes to show what the challenge is around that. Uh, it, it's it's tough. It, it, it and it's not a new phenomenon for anybody here who wants to be in digital media. Like this is it's a it, it's it's always going to be a challenge for you. What is different for me now, having come into this, is that when you talk about something like IoT and clean tech, was the same way. Um, I get 200, 300 emails a day. Everybody um, wants to uh, invest in the space. Everybody in the enterprise uh, community, and I'm based in San Francisco and in, in Silicon Valley, everybody there wants to have an IoT solution of some kind. Um, so they're all throwing money at it, which is a good thing to have. And people are worried about, well, okay, what about um, you know, the integrity of the, of the publication? What about the... Uh, what are the stories that you're going to tell? And uh, to me, it's like, well, we don't know anything more about this space than, than these guys do. Quickly, when you start talking to a lot of our enterprise clients, 
it is something they're literally trying to figure out. It's not just a, uh, um, a new area for them. It is a whole new um, paradigm of how these things happen. So they have, they're trying to sort out their own businesses, and they're coming to you with what they think are good ideas uh, as a journalist, and you have to help them tell that. Uh, so the line between um, what one might normally consider you know, contributed or, or sponsored content, whether somebody's paying for it or somebody's giving us something for free, that is enlightening to a broader audience. Right now, that is probably um, more, uh, more flexible for us than at any time because there is a giant learning curve that folks are coming up. Um, then the bottom line of it, though, is as, a, as an editor-in-chief, um, and you know, as an editor-in-chief with as, you know, the same problem that faces most editors-in-chief everywhere else, it's a, you know, a limited resource. Uh, I have a limited number of uh, editorial resources to deploy. If I can help them shape that, and they can help explain a complicated new piece of technology to the world, I am, uh, I, I'm all for that, and we do run that at ReadWrite. But how do we move that forward? And as I, you know, going back to the issue of like saying, hey, look, we, we've, we're connecting a community here. Um, what goes beyond, you know, trying to find a post and trying to launch social around a particular post to try and get traffic? We want to actually talk about how you address a larger community. And it, it, it kind of, uh, crosses the line a little bit into activism, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. Um, but we have a whole host of, uh, you know, part of our business model is we also host events and produce content for uh, panels and so on as well. We took that, um, you know, that idea of saying, here's a, explain this piece of technology or how you deploy this in the environment and how that affects, ultimately affects end use, not just your customers, because some of their, you know, their customers are also often enterprise participants. Um, how that, you know, how do they talk to uh, the end consumer who's actually going to drive business through to their customers? And so telling that story is somebody trying to, you know, encourage them, encourage that final consumer to get involved. Um, we came up with, uh, or we didn't come up with the idea of a hackathon. They've been around for a long time. We started running them as part of a basic sponsored package. But then it dawned on us, we did a, an event, um, actually this year around CES um, at, uh, in Las Vegas, for the city of Las Vegas, where the city of Las Vegas had a, uh, um, had a particular problem they wanted to solve around uh, street lights. Um, and when they blow out, it takes a lot of time for people to go out and actually find the problem and uh, uh, and fix it, and it's, a, it's very inefficient. What they wanted was uh, some way to uh, actually know what, what was going on beforehand. So they, we had sponsors from um, Microsoft and Amazon and Honeywell and UL and the city of Las Vegas. Uh, after 48 hours of putting together um, 400 developers in the room, using ReadWrite as a platform to talk about um, this upcoming event, to talk about the city of Las Vegas' problem, um, to tie that into what we consider to be smart cities technologies. Um, they had a solution um, in 48 hours um, from 400 developers um, who had, they would develop stuff in teams. Um, I was one of the judges, there were a couple others. We would judge the solutions and then somebody won a, the winners win a prize. But for $10,000, um, they actually got a solution to the problem the developers who walked into that hackathon didn't actually know each other at that moment uh, when they came in the room. They created a team and came up with a solution for a city that was deployable. They actually wound up with a business uh, coming out of this to be able to um, solve a common problem at cities across the country. Um, and we talked about that obviously on ReadWrite and we helped bring together that community of developers and we helped bring together the sponsors and publicize the solution. Uh, that is the kind of thing where it's like, okay, that's well beyond what a digital publication would really be responsible for doing. I'm not here to help Las Vegas solve its problems. But uh, the truth is, we got together all the right people in the room to come up with 
uh, you, you know, to come up with a solution that ultimately helps everybody out. We want to turn that into a, at, uh, at ReadWrite, into a, a rolling idea for that. So we're actually working with partners on that to create hey, a, a situation where it's almost like a, uh, think of it almost like a Kickstarter for, uh, for cities to be able to solve their issues. They can post a problem, we'll throw it out to the developer community, we'll publicize it, and you know, we'll find the right partners to come up with the right technology for you, and some pretty amazing solutions can come out. Um, is that kind of beyond the, uh, the scope of what typically one would just, if I just wanted to go out to cover IoT and talk about that? Sure, um, but I think it's important that as journalists that we re-engage um, with a broader, uh, you know, with the broader community that we're in. For us, this happens to be the way for us. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, as Nicole uh, had mentioned at the end of her, her piece, I don't think there's ever been a more important time right now than uh, to be a journalist and to actually see if you have some kind of influence. There's nothing wrong with, uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with going out to uh, do you know good enterprise reporting, and and it just great straight up work like the CBS team clearly did there. But I think there's also a broader engagement um, for the there's also a broader engagement to be had for the media in their community, and to solve you know to help solve some of the issues around them, uh, some smaller issues that are not you know may not be earth changing, but it may mean a whole lot in your neighborhood, uh, and. That is one way to engage that, and that is one way to you know, allow the rest of the world to see what the power of what you're doing really is. And to, to see that, you know, to go beyond this kind of you know, fake news, real news paradigm. So uh, you, you, know, you can actually see the traction and you can see the benefit of what's happening. Um, so that, I think I've got a couple of minutes left here. I don't know if uh, I'll throw it up here if you want to ask a question. Yeah, so, you know, what I think is really fascinating about your Vegas story is the whole idea of collaboration and community and sort of going beyond the platform and to say, how do we solve solutions? And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's your, one of your big takeaways is, you know, it, it isn't just a story. Sometimes right. we do define things in terms of what's my lead or what's my, my story point, and you're saying, that there's so much more, especially when you consider community. Is that right? That's right. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, there's, I mean, clearly, <laughs> I'm gonna suppose there's a story in Las Vegas that says, you know, we're having trouble with our streetlights, uh, or, or the city has a, uh, a budgeting issue, or whatever that story might actually be. Well, here is what, and that's great, that is still a story, um, but there is an issue there of saying like, hey, what, it, what, uh, what solution can be found to this? Um, and that for us was, you know, that's where we fit in. And we spent a lot of time over a beer last night talking about um, the, the value, sorry about that, I might not even need this, um, of, uh, of technology. And we talked about the fascination, right, with IoT and mm -hmm. with uh, clean technology and that kind of thing. But, right. but what you said is, and, and I think this is a great point, so many people really don't know what to do with that. And here's an opportunity in Vegas with a real problem with street lights to address that and for your platform to build relationship with audience in that way, right? Right, and, and you know, for us, obviously that, um, uh, that developer community audience is somebody who we would be talking to with that. And, and the, the, the you know, executive or IoT decision maker, the people that will ultimately pay a lot of the bills at ReadWrite, um, will also be interested in that because it's their, it's uh, you know it's the audience they want it. it's the audience that will be paying their bills too. Um, but for you know a little bit about uh, about that in the the you know whether it's clean tech or IoT or anything around technology right now, it is very easy outside of uh, outside of Silicon Valley to see that it's. Uh, you know, to think that there's a lot of these things that are very sort of headline and and, and not well explained, um, and because that is <laughs> that that's the desire of the people doing the actual uh, the, the folks doing the, the PR work often it's 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 hard to explain autonomous vehicle technology, um, except to say that you you know to show lots of cool visuals of driverless cars uh, driving around wherever they may have you doing their test driving, 
it, so it's, it, it's really easy to fetishize this stuff. Um, but in fact, there's some real, there's real benefit to be had. Trevor Kerwin from yeah. Read Right, thank you so much. You know, I think yeah. truly <laughs> the opportunity to, to sort of build community in this way is, is really important. So thank you.